Welcome to Lutheran Church of the Cross for this uh, Sunday worship on Sunday, October 4th. Um, as we've been practicing over the several last several weeks and months, at 11 o'clock, we will have online communion in the Zoom room. You can access that through the uh, website. And then 11.15 is uh, our fellowship time, and 11.30 is our sermon discussion. You may notice that I'm wearing a mask today. Um, you might say that this is our trial run for, for live streaming worship. And so all of the worship leaders are gathered here in the sanctuary. And so we're abiding by the, the, the uh, mask wearing, I guess, policy in Calgary uh, in public spaces. So speaking of live streaming, next Sunday, October 11th, we will be live streaming. And so if you would like to participate uh, online with the live worship, uh, you need to click in at 10 o'clock. If you don't make it uh, by then, then there will be a recorded version that's successful. But to join us for live streamed worship, uh, that'll be at 10. And there it, that also begins the opportunity to worship in person. Please check out the website because we request that you RSVP, and there's some things we have to do in order to uh, watch the capacity and make sure everything's set. Uh, as you may have seen in the announcements, there's lots of opportunities opportunities, we need some help to, as we transition to online worship, I mean, on to in-person worship. So please, if you are motivated would like to, and uh, would like to come, please check that out. Let us begin our worship. In today's gospel reading, Jesus tells a vineyard parable, it serves as an image of Israel, the prophet's mission, and Christ's death. For Christians, the vineyard also speaks of God's love, poured out in the blood of Christ, given to us for the forgiveness of sin. Grafted onto Christ, the vine at baptism, we are nourished with wine and bread, so that we may share Christ's sufferings and know the power of his resurrection. As we gather in this place, uh, we acknowledge that it's virtually that we gather. But we uh, ask that each of you be responsible for giving thanks to the land where you are and to acknowledge its current treaty holders. This church building rests on the land known for millennia as Mokinsis, where the Bow River meets the Elbow River. Today, it is commonly known as Calgary in southern Alberta. We acknowledge that this is traditional territory of the Nisitapi, or Blackfoot people, who comprise the people of Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta. We acknowledge these nations who make their home on this land, including the Siksika, Sikani, Kainai, Sutna, and Iahe and the Nakota people, which include the Janiki, the Bearspaw, and the Wesley First Nation. The city of Calgary is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. For thousands of years, people have gathered on this land to tell stories, sing songs, share ideas, and build community. In the spirit of generosity and welcome, and to honor those who have lived here for many millennia, we also gather on this land to tell stories, sing songs, share ideas, and build community. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your Spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah 5, verses 1 to 7. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. 
my beloved, had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste, and it shall not be pruned or hoed. And it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed. Righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. The psalm this morning is from Psalm 8, verses 7 to 15. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your sh face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow, and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall, so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it, and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven. Behold and tend this vine. Preserve what your right hand has planted. The second reading this morning is from Philippians chapter 3. Paul writes, If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward is what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Our gospel today continues the readings from Matthew. And for the last couple of Sundays, we've been uh, hearing part of Jesus you might say, conversation or argument with the chief priests and the Pharisees in the temple. This is after, uh, after Palm Sunday when he, when he arrived in Jerusalem. And so this is the third of those parables. And so here now, Matthew chapter 21, beginning with verse 33. Jesus said to the people, 
listen to another parable. There was uh, a man who owned a vineyard. And he built a fence around it. And he dug a wine press into it. And he built a watchtower. And then he leased it to tenants and went off to a foreign country. When the harvest time came, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect the produce. And when the tenants saw the slaves, they seized them, and they beat one, killed another, and stoned still another. Then the owner of the vineyard sent more slaves, more than the first time, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, the owner sent his son to them, for he said, Certainly, they will listen and respect my son. But when the tenants saw him, they said, here is the heir. Let's kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, what will the owner of the vineyard do to the tenants when he comes? And the people answered, he will put those wretches to a miserable death. And he will lease the vineyard and he will give him his produce at the harvest time. Jesus said, have you never read in the scriptures the stone, that the stone rejected by the builders became the cornerstone? And this was God's doing. And it was amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce the fruits of the kingdom. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken into pieces, and it will crush anyone on the fall. Now, when the chief priests and Pharisees heard these parables, they realized that they, Jesus was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him. They feared the crowd. So the people regarded Jesus as one who speaks for God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Yep, this is a parable and a story about Jesus indicting the leaders of, of, of the Jewish people, the leaders of Israel, the chief priests, and, and the elders, and you can throw in the scribes in there too. I mean, it's very, very easy to set up the allegory. The vineyard is the, the promised land that God had given to the people. And the, the tenants were those that were responsible for taking care of that land, for shepherding the people. This would have been the chief priests and the other religious leaders. And so the people that were sent by the slave, by the owner of the vineyard, represent the various prophets, people who had, who God sent to speak truth to those people so that they might know what their responsibility was, so that they might know how best to serve God and, and to, to live as God's people. And of course, the son that was sent, we know to be Jesus. And this is another foreshadowing because just as they seized the owner's son and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him, that is also what they did to Jesus. They arrested, persecuted. He suffered. They took him outside the city to Golgotha and they crucified him. This is a parable about how those chief priests and those uh, Pharisees were not open to what God was telling them to do, not open to God's word, not open to God's messengers, to the God's people speaking for God, not open to God's will. It's a par parable about them, but it's also a parable about us. Isn't it? How do we know that we are being faithful to God's call, 
How do we know they're produ- that we're producing the fruits of the kingdom? How do we know that we are listening and hearing what God is trying to say to us by God's message? Those are always good questions to ponder. And to take on that posture of pondering, I think it begins with some humility. It means letting go of the idea that we're right, that of course we're producing the fruits of the kingdom. Of course we're doing what God's calling us to do. Of course we're listening to God. As soon as we say that, then we shut ourselves off from any awareness of what God might be doing. That might be a little bit new, a little bit different. It begins with humility first, recognizing that we cannot completely know the mind of God in all things. And that as time goes on, certainly <laughs> we're in the midst of the, you know, this pandemic. What does it look like right now to be producing the fruits of the kingdom when one of the things we typically do is gather together and, and share the spirit of the Lord together? How do we know? And it's not clear to me that, of course, we in the church is producing the fruits of the kingdom. Because when I think about the fruits of the kingdom, I immediately go to the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, gentleness, and self-control. What would be the fruits of the kingdom? I think this is a very good place to start. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Faithfulness, generosity, gentleness, and self-control. And when I ask the question, okay, is it guaranteed that the church produces these? (sighs) When I think over the ages, even when I think across the land, I can see examples of times where the church seemed to be producing the opposite of many of these things. Anger and hatred and, uh, and a real impatience. And instead of generosity, kind of a wanting to hang on to what they have and focus on their survival. It is so easy. It is so easy for us to lose sight of what God is calling us to do. And to hence, instead of producing the fruits of the kingdom, the fruits of the spirit, we start producing something else. This, this text speaks to us powerfully because it reminds us that there is a particular calling that we have. There is a particular, not a particular, but a very clear part of what, of a commitment to work with God and what God is doing in this world. So how, how do we keep, how do we keep from drifting off and, and producing instead of, oh, they disappeared. <laughs> I'm going to say, instead, instead of these gifts and these fruits, how do we keep from producing other fruits? Part of it, it goes back, of course, to humility and bring, really being super curious about how God might be speaking. And, of course, we have, we have this clear revelation of God's desire for us, the Bible. That means not only having once read the Bible and discern what it meant, but to ongoingly read it because this living word continues to speak. And it speaks in different situations, different times. And to us, as, as, as we change in our, in our own ability to understand. But also, be listening to those people who are prophets in our time. People who have dug deep into their hearts, deep into their spiritual lives, and opened themselves up to what God might speak. And to listen for those people who have those words of wisdom for us. And then, just like in today's gospel, it said that uh, when the Pharisees and the chief priests realized that Jesus was speaking about them, they wanted to arrest him. But they were afraid of the crowd. It wasn't the chief priests and the scribes who recognized God standing in front of them, this prophet amongst all prophets. But it was the people, the ordinary folk, people outside that little group who then spoke to, who recognized that Jesus was a prophet. Jesus was one speaking for God. So also, especially when we're trying to figure out 
if we are producing these fruits, who best to be listening to and in conversation with than the people around us? When I say around us, especially around us as a church, our neighbors, our friends that we interact with and, and uh, we reach out to, what's their experience? This is part of the work that the centering team has been doing, the first listening team and now the centering team. How well are we doing? How might we better uh, produce these fruits of the kingdom? Now, there's some harsh words here. Jesus says if in the parable, you know, the kingdom of God was going to be taken away from the chief priests and the Pharisees and given to a people that produce the fruits of the kingdom. We don't like to hear that. And God forbid we end up produce, not producing these fruits. But the real good news is that if we produce these fruits, guess what? We get to live in a world full of these fruits. Don't you want to live? in a world full of joy and peace and patience and generosity. That's the funny thing. When we get our sights off trying to hold on to what we have, when we get our sights off trying to hang on and give in to fear and instead start trusting God and living out this faith, then the fruits start abounding. First, in those around us and then spreading and overflowing to all the the opportunity we have. It's the calling we have. It is the promise that Jesus gives us. If you will trust me, if you will follow me, if you will keep my commandments, then you will have an abundant life. This is what an abundant life looks like. Let us recommit once again to be on the lookout and asking the question, what fruits are we producing? And when we need to read Change, change what we're doing. Let's shift, allow the spirit of love and joy and peace and patience to fill us and overflow and create, help create this kingdom of God here on earth right now. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, you call us to work for peace and justice in your vineyard. Refresh the church with your life, that we may bear fruit through work and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the abundant harvest of the earth. Bless and care for those whose hands bring the fruits of the earth to the tables of all who hunger. May we be inspired by your servants who cared deeply for your creation, especially Francis of Assisi, whom we commemorate today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Curb the impulses of greed and pride that lead us to take advantage of others. Grant that world leaders seek the fruits of the kingdom for the good and welfare of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain all who suffer with the promise of new life. Assured of your presence, heal our pain and suffering and equip us to embrace all bodies aching for wholeness of mind, body, and soul. We call to mind those who are struggling today, especially for Gemma Kletke, Remat Bano, Dave Halliday, Yvonne Labore, Gil and Elsa Svensson, Patrick Hall, Lynn Onefrachuk, Jeff Kirbyson, Ella Tuvi, Marlene Stebner, E.D. Grylak, Dirk Mora Moolman, Lorna Delaney, Sherry Russell, Dave Barrow, Sheila and Jim Innes, Randy Telfer, Bill and Ruth Rucker, Devona Nicholson, Colin Hedgerat, Carter Santum, and those who mourn, the Dreger, Prosted, Kletke, Hoag, Sanders, Hulk, Kerr, Thomas, and Wright families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all managers in our community and for all who seek employment. Give hope and a future to those who lack meaningful work, those who have been marginalized or abused in the workplace, and those who desire new opportunities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the saints who teach us to live faithfully in your vineyard. May our chorus join theirs until our labor is complete. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. 
signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. A blessing for us. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Go in peace. Let your light shine. Thanks be to God.